So now that I've had a fair amount of time with both of the next gen systems, the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, I want to talk about what stands out to me the most with this new crop of consoles, something I think may end up being more important than people think. It's not the fast load times with the SSDs or the detailed 4K graphics provided by both of these systems GPUs. It's actually the controller, the PS5 DualSense controller in specific, that stands out to me as the most impressive thing about these consoles more than anything else. As I talked a bit about in my video on Spider-Man Miles Morales for the PS5, this thing with its haptic feedback and adaptive triggers is really something else. It's sort of like the Switch with its HD rumble, but on some massive steroids. If you're not familiar with any of this, the controller takes simple elements like rumble that are used to provide that extra layer of immersion to a completely new level. Now, it's hard to demonstrate these features in a video like this stuff is hard to convey through words. Uh, it'd be so much easier to just hand you guys the controller and have you try it for yourself. But I want to start off by looking at some of the stuff from Astro's Playroom, the pack-in game for the PS5, because the game is pretty much all centered around uh, the new DualSense controller. When you boot up the game, you're greeted with this little sort of demo of the DualSense features. When it starts, a bunch of little digital blocks drop down that take the shape of the controller to sort of, I guess, summon it. And when this happens, you can feel, when you're holding the controller in your hand, you can feel each of those blocks take shape. The rumble moves from the bottom of the controller to side to side, all the way working its way up to the top. And each time one of those blocks pops up on screen, you feel it in your hands with the controller. That's how precise this haptic feedback is. So you have a lot of possibilities here, a lot of cool implementations that I've seen with it already. Uh, sticking with Astro's Playroom, there's one level that has a lot of wind in it, you know, blowing you around. You've surely seen levels like this, especially in platformers. But while that wind is hitting you, it's not like, again, the controller is just uh, rumbling. You actually feel the wind come from whichever side it's hitting you from and move all the way along the controller. So like if you're facing the wind, you're walking towards it, you can feel the wind traveling from the top of the controller down to the bottom. And then when the wind lets up, you can feel it get weaker and weaker until it goes away. And it's those smaller, more subtle things that probably stood out to me the most. Like while playing Demon Souls, just riding those rickety elevators, you know, you can hear the clicking and clanking both on your TV and coming out of the controller speaker as well. And it's also felt in the controller. The louder, perhaps closer clanking sounds you feel more than the smaller ones that are possibly further away. Again, it almost feels like your hand is riding this rickety elevator. And like I said, it's very subtle. Uh, you know, riding an elevator in Demon's Souls is much different than, say, what it feels like to actually take a hit from an enemy in Demon's Souls. Trust me, I've taken quite a few hits already in that game. But those big hits even can also feel very different from each other. Like I talked about in my last Spider-Man video, there's a different, you know, oomph to the rumble with everything, like your light attacks versus your heavy attacks, what it feels like if you hit a character and they block versus if you hit them when their guard is open. And then like with the swinging in Spider-Man 2 I talked about, you can feel the tension in your web sort of be loose as you're on the way down. But then as it gets tighter and your web swings you back up, you can feel that tension, that grip in your hands. It really makes you feel like Spider-Man. It makes you feel, as GameSpot would say, like you have the exaggerated swagger of a black teen. And that's just something you can't put a price on. Also, the triggers are another thing here, as the controller can change the level of resistance when you pull down on the triggers, depending on the situation, making it either easier or harder to push them all the way down. So again, in this controller demo, it sort of has you doing a rocket boost effect. And when you pull down on the trigger for this, it goes down super easy for about a third or so of the way. Like you could just tap it and it would go down that far. But to get it the rest of the way down, you need to give it more pressure and sort of click it uh, into place. Like many triggers that may connect to something dangerous, it usually requires more pressure to get said thing activated. You need to squeeze a bit harder, which 
feels more realistic. And the best thing that's going to demonstrate really anything to do with triggers is, of course, shooting games. Now, I don't have any new shooty titles, uh, so I'm stealing some footage from another YouTuber uh, named uh, Riyard Ramneth, who did a video showcasing what the triggers felt like with different guns in the new Call of Duty game. Uh, Call of Duty Cold War, I think it's called. Uh, I'll link to it below in case you guys want to see more, like what all the different guns look like. But for instance, in the video he shows like a single shot rifle, doing kind of the thing I just described with the Astros Playroom demo where it's like, you have that extra resistance at the end of a pull. But again, depending on the situation, the gun perhaps, that resistance can be jacked up and down quickly if need be. So watch his finger as he uses a machine gun. Yeah, it's just a whole new level of immersion, guys. I've actually heard some people complain with the triggers in some of these gun games. Like, people say, you know, it may throw them off with, say, competitive play, which I get. You don't want anything that can distract you if you're being a tryhard. But elements like the adaptive triggers are an option you can turn off from the system menu. Uh, so I think that's important to note, too. Like, if you're seeing stuff like this and thinking, oh, this might be cool to mess around with, but... When I'm being serious, I would find this more distracting than anything. Those features can be disabled. But yeah, I think this stuff is way more than just a gimmick. I find it to be legitimately game-changing, and I find the titles I've played on the PS5 so far much more immersive because of the DualSense controller. So why do I think this may end up being a very important aspect of the console? Yeah, maybe even on the level of these things that have been talked up, like the SSD hard drives and, of course, the powerful GPU. Well, simply, competition. The Xbox Series X has no such features. And as we've seen with comparisons of multi-plats come out of places like Digital Foundry, uh, these two consoles appear to be pretty close in terms of overall performance. Like, I've seen some games look better or run better on one system, while a different game runs and looks better on the other system. In terms of overall performance, these systems are very close. The differences, at least from what I've seen, haven't been that dramatic. Which for me, given this new controller, could mean a pretty big shift, particularly with how I play third-party games. Uh, as soon as the Xbox One X came out, I was buying all my third-party stuff on Xbox because most things ran better on that console. You could get higher frame rates, higher resolutions, because the One X was significantly more powerful. But like I said now, the new Xbox and PlayStation both appear to be pretty on par, and I'm getting a lot of added enjoyment out of using the PS5's controller. So if third parties are going to end up taking advantage of that, I may be inclined to buy those games on the PS5 going forward. You know, I look at something like Cyberpunk 2077. I actually, I think I already have the Xbox version of that game pre-ordered, but I could see a game like that. I could imagine it doing some really cool stuff with this DualSense controller. And if that ends up being the case, I may switch that pre-order to PlayStation. And I think that could be the case for a lot of other people. And having that best third-party experience was kind of Xbox's bread and butter uh, in the later part of the last generation with the One X. So if it starts to feel like they're losing that without having much of a grasp on getting system seller exclusives out the door, this could make things even worse for them. Because yeah, after putting in a fair amount of hours with the PS5 controller, the difference playing games on my Series X is noticeable. And when I'm doing it, I miss all those PS5 bells and whistles. This could be a big selling point for the PS5 this gen, which would also mean more problems for the Xbox. Anyway, with that, this video is a wrap. Let me know your thoughts on the PS5 DualSense controller in the comments. Have you been able to go hands-on with it yet? If so, what do you think about it? And if not, how do you think it sounds from what you've been hearing people say about it? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you want to keep the conversation going, hit me up on Twitter, at Johnny Zakari, and join my Discord, Shy Guy and Friends. Link to both in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.